Old Brooklyn Christian Church, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recover of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed old brooklyn christian church well i'd like to welcome everyone to old brooklyn christian church today's message is battle for your heart the most deadly battles are the ones we are unaware of Right. Amen. Amen. And a lot of times Christians step into things unaware, not realizing that it is actually a trap. And a lot of things that the enemy does, he entices us with his charisma. He entices us with things that are already in our heart. The Bible says that when we're tempted of sin, we're, let no man say that he's tempted of God. Right. But he's tempted by the own lust of his own heart. Amen. So we have some things that are going on in our own heart and our flesh and that sin nature from Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, that draw us to things that the enemy wants to ensnare us with. Amen. But how many of you know that we battle not against flesh and blood? but about spiritual wickedness at high places. And a lot of times we don't even know that we're in a battle or we forget because we get caught up into daily routines. Amen. That we forget that the people that may be vexing your heart or the person that may be bribing you or persuading you, that they may actually be after your heart. Amen? Amen. Amen. The most deadly battles are the ones we are unaware of. How many know in Middle East, a lot of times Middle East are plotting uh, terrorist attacks. They have jihad, they have ISIS, they have all types of terrorism that's taken place. And a lot of these, uh, these Muslims, these uh, radical uh, Muslims, terrorist Muslims, a lot of times they're plotting destruction. Right. And they are unaware totally that they are being monitored by drones. And there are drones that fly above the human eye detection, above the clouds, and they hide themselves way up in the sky. And these uh, folks that are planning evil, they are totally unaware that the, everything that they're doing is being monitored, that they've been followed, that they've been watched, and that at any given time, their life is subject to be taken from them. And at one flick of a button, the entire terrorist plot could be totally wiped out, totally destroyed. Amen. This is what happens with drones in the Middle East. Amen. And I got to tell you, in the same way, Satan has his drones yeah. that are flying in the sky, principalities of the air, that they're watching every move that they make, waiting to kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And the Bible says that we are uh, not ignorant Amen. of Satan's devices. Amen. Nah. Choose bold Christians who will spiritually lift us up when we battle. Amen. If you know that there is a battle out there for your heart, it's our duty, it's our obligation to surround ourselves with bold Christians. The Bible says that our, our righteousness, the righteous are as bold as a lion. Amen. So we need to surround ourselves by Christians who are not lukewarm, once saved, always saved, live however they want, uh, talk about Jesus loves me so that I can sin and live anyway. We need to surround ourselves with real Holy Ghost filled, on fire for God, not lukewarm Christians, people that love God, people that want to live holy, people that want to live right. We need to surround ourselves with those folks because when the time comes, you're not going to want a lukewarm Christian That's right. That's right. when a real battle comes forth you're going to want someone that can lift up a prayer right. to God Amen. Amen. you're going to want someone that already has a connection to Jesus Christ that already has a relationship with Jesus Christ someone that has the favor of God because battles are a coming Amen. You might be in a time of peace right now, but that doesn't mean peace is promised always. There is going to be battles. There's going to be life that's going to knock on your door. Amen. And you're going to thank God if you just but have one bold Christian in your life. That's all you need. Amen. 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 Jesus said, when two or more gather together in my name, there I am. Amen. I'd rather take one on fire for the Lord Christian on my side than a thousand lukewarm. That's right. Amen. 
battle for your heart. How I many know this message is a battle for your heart? Amen. That's what this that's what coming to church is about, is about battling for your heart. How I many know that the devil sees the value of who you are? Amen. He does. That's why he's gonna fight for you. He see he see he sees the importance of your soul. Sometimes more than we do. But so does Jesus. That's why he was willing to go to the cross. In Exodus 17, 9, the Bible says that Moses said unto Joshua, choose out men. What kind of men did you choose in your life? Who's in your circle? Who do you have close to you? Who did you choose to uplift you? Because I'm going to tell you what, sometimes you don't know who you chose until the battle comes. You don't know who's really in your circle, who's really with you until the battle comes. I believe the Bible says, and I'm kind of butchering it, that a rich man has all kinds of friends. Right? But a poor person, who can find a friend? See, when you're in the low place, when you're in the valley, you're going to find out who your real friends are. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose out men and go out and fight with the Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. Do you have Christians in your life that will take you to the top of the hill? Or do you have people in your life that are only interested in dragging you down to the bottom of the hill? (laughs) See, it said, Go to the top of the hill with the rod of God. In mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Why is it important that he went to the top of the hill? Because the higher you go, the more advantage point you have. You have a new perspective. You have a new vision. You have a new insight. The higher you go, the more you see. And you start to look at the overall picture. And your perception starts to broaden. We need people in our life that when we're fighting in a battle, we need people that God is going to place in our life that have insight, that have vision, that have purpose, that can see the bigger picture and not minimalize. But warn you and tell you that the enemies are coming from the left. They're coming to the right. They're coming straight ahead. We need people in our life that can point out the enemy, that have the gift of discernment, that they can tell the difference between left and right, up and down, good and evil. We need people like that in our life. People that we can go to for godly counseling. You, it's hard to find a pastor in this earth that people actually submit themselves to the pastor and go to them before they make a decision. They usually will go to the pastor after they already made up their mind, after they already made up the decision, and after they destroyed their life, and then they want the pastor to make a miracle happen. But few people will actually humble themselves and bring their battle to the pastor or the man of God. It doesn't have to be a pastor to a Christian and humble themselves and look for counseling. Why? Because man, and I mean editorially speaking, man and women is so proud. We have this independency that we feel like we don't need no help. But you don't know that God has equipped other brothers and sisters in the Lord to be able and anointed them and appointed them to be able to bless you with information that can change your life or cause you to avoid a battle that would have destroyed you. Amen. Only sword that will win the war of hearts is the Word of God. Amen. Amen. This is the true weapon of warfare is the Word of God. The Bible says that the Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. And this is what we use to battle for hearts. Amen? It's not the Word of Allah. It's not the Word of Muhammad. Yesterday, me and my wife were at a restaurant, and there was this baby could barely talk and walk and ran over to our table. She was the little baby, cute, let's just say this, baby was cute as ever. I mean, ridic- ridic- almost illegally cute, just cute, right? Baby comes running over barefooted, 
in the restaurant and the baby saying, Allah, 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 Allah. Wow. Hey, look, if you want to entrust your baby unattended to my table, then that's at your expense. Because as the baby says, Allah, 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus. Your baby's going to come back born again, speaking in tongues, coming to our table. Amen. Lay hands on them parents. It's about Jesus. Allah, Allah, Allah. Cute. I'm just saying cute. <laughs> Only the sword that will win the war of hearts is the word of God. Of God. In Exodus 17, 11, it came to pass when Moses held up his hands that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hands, the Amalek prevailed. Hands up, Israel prevailed. Hands down, Amalek prevailed. A lot of times we only exclusively pertain this to a pastor or a leader. But I want to say this pertains to Christians. Amen. That you are going to get in wars and you are going to be drained. There's going to be spiritual vampires, time vampires. They're going to suck up all your energy, suck up all your time. And by the time you leave their presence, your hands are going to go down. You're going to be drained. That's right. And you're going to need some men and women of God to lift up your hands. Amen. Amen. On that note, it does pertain to pastors. It should be the church's heart and desire that they should lift up the pastor. They should encourage the pastor. They should support the pastor and not make his job grievous. Amen. Amen. When the pastor sees you coming, is he like this? Or is he like... I don't know. I'm not, I'm not judging. But Moses' hands were heavy and they took a stone and put it under him and sat him there and, and Aaron and her stayed up his hands. In other words, they supported him. Do you got people in your life that support you when you're in battle? Do you got people that are going to hold up your hands when you're going to war? The one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady. Do you got steady people in your life? Or you got double-minded people? That are tossed to and from. I know that there are, there are pastors that will come into a church and they'll try to, because they, they feel like they, they need a big congregation to prove that they're important or valuable, they'll try to proselytize and take out all the members. Are you easily persuaded that the, the, someone says something to you that you just run? Are you pl planted? Are you steady? Are you faithful? Because the devil is counting. The devil is banking on people in your life that are not steady. That are not rooted. That they're not founded. They're not ground, grounded. They just come and go. They're undependable. And Joshua, it says that their hands were steady until going down of the sun. And Joshua discomforted Amalek and his people with the edge of his sword. He used the word of God to destroy yes. the enemies. Amen. And that's what we have to use too. Amen? That's right. Amen. See, I know, I know um, that there are uh, pastors out there that have theology degrees. Right? And their theology degree, I wouldn't say necessarily is a bad thing depending on what they taught in school. That's 
because they could have taught them more false doctrines and more unbiblical teachings and actually draw them away from the church. But I got to tell you, I don't know of any testimony ever since I've been a Christian of any pastor that said when I was in a battle and I was under spiritual warfare and the enemy was hitting me from the left and the right that I pulled out my theology degree and it helped me. I don't know of any pastor that was suffering from cancer and was in the hospital on his deathbed and said, I pulled out my theology degree and I was healed. Wow. In fact, I know the opposite of that. I know a pastor who had a, a master's theology degree of divinity. A master's. And I know that he was a hardcore Calvinist. He believed once saved, always saved, that he didn't have no free will. This is what he believed. And while he was pastoring the church, wow. while he was pastoring the church, holding his theology degree, he chose to sleep with another man's wife. And he slept with the other man's wife as a pastor and continued to do it while holding a theology degree with his Calvinism. <laughs> Believe in once saved, always saved. And what happened with this pastor, he slept with another man's wife. They got divorced. The church shut down. Praise God. Thank God. <laughs> That's why I love this place. <laughs> The church shut down and the, the, the woman that the pastor was sleeping with moved to Cleveland. And a few years later, the woman killed herself. Wow. And now the pastor that was battling, the enemy was battling over his heart. And the very thing that he tried to force to happen the very thing that he was willing to sin against God and blame it on once saved, always saved, blame it on not having free will, the very thing that he lost the church over, he ended up getting it, the woman. And then she moves to Cleveland and they get married. And after they get married, after only a few years later, she takes a gun to her head pulls the trigger, and she takes her own life. And now that same pastor is not right where he started. Because now, because he started with the church, he started preaching, and now he lost the church, he's no longer a pastor, and he's still single again. See, you can't force things to happen outside of God's will. You can't force things to happen outside of God's word. People think that they can marry anyone they want and do whatever they want, but you're going to realize that even if you do, if it's not God's will, it's going to fall apart. The church often beats down divorce, but they turn their head to marriages that God didn't put together. And just because a pastor can marry someone or a court can marry someone, that doesn't mean that God put them together. Just because they have a life license or a degree does not mean that God ordained it or God called it or God blessed it or that it was God's will. You can do whatever you want. You could take two homosexuals and marry them and have judges and make it legal in man's eyes, but that doesn't mean that God ordained it. It doesn't mean that it's not going to be cursed. It doesn't mean that it's going to last. Why do these things happen? Because there is a battle for our heart. The enemy is after pastors, preachers, teachers. Christians, he's after the bride of Christ. Yes. Jealous. Envious. We treasure that which we spend our money and our time on. See, we say we love Jesus, but when it comes to tithes and offerings, we lock up. <laughs> lock it up. If you can't tithe an offering... And you can't give to the Lord, right? But it's so easy for you to spend your money on cigarettes. <laughs> you can't give any offering to the house of God, but it's easy for you to give money to the movie theater. <laughs> I know you said you love Jesus. You can't give any money to the house of God, but you can spend it on yourself, on clothing, on makeup, on hair, on nails, on houses, on your wife, on yourself. You can spend your money everywhere for the flesh. 
But when it comes to God, we say we love Jesus, but where do you put your money? Where do you invest in? And I'm not going to sit here and try to pretend or prove anything to you and to say that I love Jesus because I spent... No, you need to evaluate your own self. Don't worry about me. Amen? Amen. Now, check this out. We treasure, we treasure, the Bible says, judge righteously. Amen? Right. Amen. The Bible says, judge righteously. And if you don't judge righteously, then you're judging unrighteously. Amen? Amen. 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 Judging just simply means to choose, yep. to decide. Amen. If you can't choose and decide, then that means that there's something mentally wrong with you. Amen. Amen. You made a choice and you judged to come here today. Amen. Amen. We treasure that which we spend our money on. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I know sometimes some people feel convicted. They're not used to being in the house of God and they feel convicted. Amen. Welcome to Old Brooklyn Christian Church. Amen. Welcome. We want to make you aware of your shortcomings. And guess what? I'm not exempt too because even I convict myself. And my wife will remind me at the end of the service, you convicted yourself on that one. I say, yeah, I did. Amen. No one's exempt from the Word of God. Amen. Amen. We treasure that which we spend our money and time on. Where do you spend your time on? Amen. Is it a burden for you to come to? Check this out. Right? Check this out. Our, our church is only two hours a week. <gasps> so hard. How many hours do you spend working for money? 40 hours a week? But you can squeeze off barely God two hours a week. Two hours a week. Let's stick with the two hours a week. How many watch one movie once a week? Just one movie once a week. Amen. Then you've already equal, balanced out how much you fed God. You've given God two hours a week and you've given a movie, Hollywood, who don't love you, who didn't die for you and ain't going to help you, but only take your money. Amen. You've given Hollywood two hours a week. How many spend, I don't know, an hour and a half a day eating? Then you valued, the Bible says, man can't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Most folks spend two, three, four hours eating a day, right? And they do it happily. You can see them making YouTube videos, singing and cooking and making, sauteing, flipping it behind their back and cooking and bam, putting that oregano on there, doing all kinds of things. But when it comes to squeezing off God two hours a week, I don't know if I can make it. <laughs> Blowing up the pastor's phone. Tumba, I can't make it. Amen. I ain't trying to beat you down and put you in a, re a religious oppression and bondage. I'm just making it plain. Amen. Yeah, amen. Let's, how many hours do you sleep? Eight hours a day? <laughs> how many hours do you take showers, baths? You, you, you wash your physical body longer a week I hope so. <laughs> Dick and Chow, where's that potpourri at? You physically, check this out, you physically wash your physical body in the shower more than you wash your spiritual body. Amen. I say it in love, amen? amen. We treasure that which we spend our money and time on, amen? And why? 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 Because the enemy is after your heart. Amen. The enemy is after your time. The enemy doesn't want you to spend a minute in the house of God. The enemy doesn't want you to hear the word of God. The enemy wants you to forsake the assembling of believers as some are in the habit of doing. He's after your heart. He knows that if he can get you outside of the church, if he can get you outside of the word of God, if he can get you outside of the gifts that iron sharpens iron, he knows that he can work on your heart. He knows that if he gets your heart, he can control you. He can manipulate you and he can use you as a pawn. The Bible says in 6.19, it says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, wherein moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. See, we spend so much time and money, so much time and money and energy on things that are only going to be stolen or rusted and that we can't take to the grave with us. But when it comes to our soul, when it comes to our spirit, when it comes to our heart, we neglect it. Amen. Amen. 
And the devil's hoping for that. It says, but lay up yourselves treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. Now I'm going to judge every single one of you. I'm going to judge righteously. I believe that you love God because you wouldn't be here. You came out of your own time. Time is money. You sacrificed time. You sacrificed energy. You paid gas. You traveled. You traveled to come here. Why? Because you love Jesus. Amen. And you want your heart to be maintained by the Word of God. Amen. And God will bless you for it. Amen. The longer we allow the Word, excuse me, the longer we allow the wrong thing in our heart, yeah. the harder it is to get it out. The longer we allow the wrong thing in our heart. Some people have allowed relationships that are not of God in their heart. And they've allowed it so long that it's going to be hard to get it out. Not impossible. This could be romantic relationships. This could be fornication, adultery. This can be relationships with Facebook. This could be relationship with family, anything. People that are not respecting your relationship with Jesus. People that are not holding your arms up in the battle. People that are not spiritually discerning to actually help you at the time of war. The longer we allow the wrong thing in our heart, the harder it is to get it out. Amen. Amen. Matthew 5.29 says, And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out, and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee, that one of thy members should perish, and not that the whole body should be cast into hell. If we do not let God fill the voids in our heart, Satan will. Yes. Amen. If we do not let God fill the voids in our heart, Satan will. In Proverbs 7, 4, it says, Say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. They that keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger with flatter with her words. How many know when the enemy is after your heart, the enemy is going to hit you with flattery? See, a lot of times we think the enemy is going to be aggressive and cuss us out and yell at us and smack us and try to physically fight us. But how many of you know the real enemy, the more powerful enemy, doesn't operate that way? The real enemy smiles in your face while stabbing you in the back. And the Bible's talking about a woman who flatters with their words. But I got to tell you, this is actually not a woman. This is a spirit. And this spirit will go in and out of men and women. In Proverbs 7.21, the Bible says, With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. How many of you know the enemy wants to force you to do things that God did not call you to do? Yes. But you ain't been guarding your heart. You've been caught off guard. You've been so focused on what you don't have that you're ignoring what you do have. Amen. If we give Satan access to our heart, he can guide us to hell. This is all the enemy wants is access to your heart. That's what he wants. In Proverbs 7.22 it says, He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter. Now I like how the Bible chose to use the analogy of an ox. Because an ox is not a weak thing. An ox is not a lamb. In fact, an ox is big. It's strong. It's powerful. It's muscular. But I got to tell you, it doesn't matter how strong and powerful you are. You are not exempt. You are not exempt from being attacked and flattered and misled by the enemy. It says, Old Brooklyn Christian Church, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has. Saved
sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recover of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed old brooklyn christian church